I'm Johnny Buchanan, and in this video, we're going to look at how we can work with templates within Logic Pro. Sometimes you want to open up a brand new Logic project, be greeted with an empty screen, and to start building sounds for a project from scratch. You might not have a clear sense of the track you want to work to. You might not have a clear idea of the um, palette of sounds you want to use, let alone any of their mix settings, effects, all of that's further down the road. But sometimes we like to work with a group of sounds that we already know and trust. And particularly the best way to think about templates and the value of them is to imagine for a moment that you've been asked to compose a, an orchestral score maybe for a film and you need to temp it out with MIDI instruments. If you know that you're going to need a piano, violins, violas, cellos, brass, percussion, and every single new cue that you start is going to need those instruments, you're going to spend an hour and a day maybe setting up those instruments from scratch at the beginning of every single session that you start. It makes much more sense to build that project once, save it as a template so that you're then in a position to recall it and start from a set group of sounds every single time you work. And in this uh, video, what we're going to do is to find out exactly how we can go about building templates of our own. So what I've done is I've started by setting up one completely empty software instrument track. There are no sounds assigned to this project. And what I'm going to do is to start thinking a little bit about the sounds that I might want to work with. So I'm going to use the library option within Logic here. And what I'm going to do is to start by saying, okay, well, I like to write at the piano. So I'm going to select the Yamaha Grand Piano and that's here. And as we're used to within Logic, not only is that loaded a sound that I can play, I've also got some effects that have been added to the project as well. And so straight away, I've now got my first sound um, and an instrument that I can begin to work to. Okay, so what I'm then going to do is to double click to set up another instrument. And maybe this time, what I want to do is to use some strings. So I'm going to come into the orchestral options. I'm going to come into strings. and I'm just going to find maybe a string ensemble sound, which um, can sit here as well. And I can go through and continue to populate this project with new tracks. Now, it seems to me that probably already, if I was working with these two sounds side by sound, the pianos are a volume I like and the strings are too loud. So the next thing I can start to think about configuring within this project would be to set some mixer settings, which are maybe a little bit more appropriate. Again, I don't want to have to open my template project and immediately reach for the string fader and turn it down. If I know I'm doing that every single time because it's always too loud, I might as well make that part of my template. And similarly, there might be reverbs or effects that I particularly like to use. I might think, right, actually, in addition to these two that have been set up automatically, I might decide that I want to set up an auxiliary bus, bus number four here, which I might put a delay on. So I'm going to come down here, come into tape delay and set up this tape delay within this project. Now I can either keep this window open or I can close it. Why am I dwelling on that particular point? If I leave it open, it will be open every single time I open this template. Every single setting you set within your Logic project will open the same way every single time. So what I need to do, I want to make sure that this window isn't always open. I'm going to close it, but I'm also going to close the um, browser here. I also want to remember that this new auxiliary that I've set up is a delay, so I'm going to name it. And again, the reason I'm doing that is because now that I've named it, its name will be saved as part of this template. Let's have a look around Logic with a few other features as well. There could be individual tools that I like to use every single time I'm working within a project. For instance, I like to work with low latency mode, which allows me to make sure that I never have to worry about there being a lag between what I play and what I hear. So having configured the tracks options here by pressing control and clicking anywhere where this gray bar exists, I can customize the control bar and I can switch on the options that I like. So I've enabled low latency mode and I'm also going to turn on capture recording, which means that anything I happen to play rather than record, I can obviously then turn into a captured recording. So nothing that I improvise or play with will be lost. So those two new options have been added to the toolbar up here and now I'm in a good position. I also really like making sure that I'm working with a slightly larger version of the display up here so that I can see tempo, I can see time signature. And again, I'm selecting this option so that it's part of every single project that I open. Now I'm going to leave the mixer open at the bottom. I like to have projects that start with the mixer available to me so I can start making changes. We've only added two tracks here. And of course, 
What I'm in a position to do is to add lots and lots of different instruments. I could bring in audio files. I might like uh, working with the same sort of hip hop beat maybe to start with every single time I start a project. It might provide me with a bit of vibe. Well, I could drag that in from the loop browser, put it on an audio track and it would be waiting for me every single time I want to work. So how do I save this project to become a template? At the moment, it's just any old logic project. I could save it as a regular logic project, but that then wouldn't be a starting point for any other tracks that I wanted to start from this particular place. So what I'm going to do is to come to the file menu, and what I'm going to do is to save as template. And this option here allows me to give a name to this project. I'm going to just call this piano and strings because uh, those are the instruments that I've got within my project. I'm going to just give it this name and then I'm in a position to save it. So when I press save, this project is now going to save as a template. And we're just going to have one last look around. A couple of things we're going to notice. So for instance, at the moment, I've left a string ensemble as the track that is currently selected. And the reason why I'm drawing your attention to that is because when I close this project, what I'm in a position to do when I uh, reopen it as a template is to notice that exactly where we left the project is where we're going to start it. So if I come to File, what I can do is I can um, create a new project from template, the second option here. And when I select this, up comes my individual templates, which are over here on the left hand side. So I could start from an empty project or from a live loop session, but also I've got my templates, which are here. And what we should find is my piano and string project, which is here. You can see that I've got other start points which exist, which I've created um, from scratch or from to become templates that I can work to as well. For now, we're just going to reopen the one that I just saved and I'm going to choose this option. And the reason why I made a point of saying, okay, remember that we finished on the string ensemble and that's the track that's currently selected is because Logic's even remembered that detail. It assumes that I want to start writing for strings and not for the piano. So of course, it's very easy for me to just click the piano and load that instrument instead. But again, that's just worth bearing in mind. Now, before we do click the piano, what we're going to do is to note a couple of other things. You'll notice that down at the very bottom of the project, because the string ensemble track is currently selected, not only is its instrument live, ready to play, so are its effects and so are the auxiliary buses which are assigned to this particular instrument. The piano, however, which is on track one, you can see that everything is slightly greyed out. And the reason for that is that Logic has not yet loaded that sound. Now you might think, well, that's not very helpful. What I want to do is to be able to write for the piano. Well, that's easily fixed. The moment I click on the piano track, all of its effects and all of its instrumentation will load. So straight away, that channel is now active again. But the reason why that becomes valuable is if you start working with really large templates. Let's suppose you go back to the example I gave at the beginning that you're writing a full orchestral cue for every single track that you start from a template. Well, that might be tens of tracks, lots of different strings, brass, woodwinds, percussion, pianos, you name it. So the reason why those sounds aren't default, uh, default set to load the moment you open the entire template is because it could be that you don't need every single instrument every single time. So rather than Logic loading all of those and you waiting a long time for the template to open, instead it opens very quickly and you can then select each track that you need on a per track basis. Let me show you what I mean. What I'm going to do is to show you, I'm going to close this particular project, we don't need to save it. I'm going to open again from template, and this time I'm going to open my full orchestral template, which is here, which is a much more involved arrangement. I'm going to open this from scratch, and you can see that very quickly this project has opened. Now it's done that despite the fact that within this particular project, there are literally hundreds of tracks. Now what I've done, let's take the pianos as an example. What I have done is to create a um, a track stack for all of the pianos that I might want to use within a particular project. So I might want to work with this piano called Emotional Piano, which I really like, or Unicorda, or uh, VSL's Imperial Piano, or this Muted Piano, um, which is a Spitfire audio sample. Those are the four pianos that I like writing with, and depending on the type of music that I'm working with, I'll choose an individual piano sound. Now at the moment, if we open the mixer, we'll see that none of them are currently loaded. Here are all four of them, but none of them have yet been selected. So if I decide that I want to load Emotional Piano, when I click on that track, it will load that particular plugin. And it might take a moment because this is an instrument that's loading into contact rather than just being a Logic instrument. But you can see that that track has automatically um, come alive, it's loaded. 
So this sound straight away now is loaded, but it's the only instrument that's going to make a noise if I start playing instruments uh, within this project. And if we close the mixer back down again, you can see that the same thing is true for a whole range of things. Here is my tuned percussion stack, which contains harp and celeste and crotals and other instruments as well. And further down, we've got all of the strings that I might want to use with long articulations and short articulations. So what I've got within this project is a series of individual instruments which are organized into track stacks on a per instrument basis. And it begins to give you an idea of how deep you can go within templates. You can route sounds to particular buses, you can create track stacks, you can set up effects for individual sounds, and you can see that all of this is waiting for me. And if I open maybe, let's say, two or three of these individual track stacks so that we can actually see them within the mixer, you can begin to see how involved things start to get. So I can see straight away that within my pianos here, there are the four tracks that exist within the piano stem. Here's my tuned percussion one. Here are my strings longs, and here are my shorts, and so on. And each of these individual groups of sounds is being rooted to its own effects, and they all exist within this template as well. So within this video, we've begun to understand the power of templates. And that can be true whether or not you're working on a really big template like this, or a much more straightforward one. Let's go back to the beginning. We started by opening a brand new Logic project, opening just a couple of sounds, thinking about tempo and things that we wanted to add to the toolbar, maybe setting a couple of mix balance adjustments, maybe setting up a couple of effects, and then being ready just to say, okay, I like writing from this starting point, so I'm going to save this basic little Logic project as a template so that I don't have to set up even these two or three uh, sounds every time I start. Equally, if you want to, you can think much more deeply about templates. You can think, okay, I'm going to be writing deep, involved cues every single time I start writing in Logic, and I want to have this potential to have all of these sounds available to me, balanced and mixed the way that I like every single time I start. So whether or not you're right at the beginning of working with templates or you're much further into that process, it's really worth taking advantage of having these individual sonic ingredients at your fingertips every time you start a new project.